good evening all of you and after so many days again i am taking this opportunity to tell you about this income tax okay and this income tax it's a ever changing subject and it depends upon the changes in financial budgets whenever you come across financial budget whether it may be of central government or state government then you will come across some rules and the changes in rules and regulations of income tax but the origin it will be one and the same it won't change the rules whatever they are lying in the act they will change but don't be of that opinion that the whole act will change and some of the points i told you already and today i am going to take into account some of the points okay in this income tax and what are the various points that we come across when we go for this when we go for aggregate taxation when we go for aggregate taxation we have to take into account the shri raghava excuse me బోలేయన్ సార్ ఎక్కడున్నారు ఎక్కడున్నారు ఇవాళ శాలరీ శాలరీ వేయలేదు సార్ శాలరీ రేపేస్తట ఇవాళ నేను ఇందాక వస్తున్నప్పుడు కనుక్కున్నాను రేపు రేపు అన్నాడు మీకు ఇన్విజులేషన్ డబ్బులు వేశాడు అది కాదు అది కాదు ఇవాళ పంపించాడు అది అదే కదా నాకేం వేయలేదు నాకు ఇది స్టాండ్ బై పెట్టాడు అంటే ఎవరైనా ఒంటరికి రెండుకి అది నాకు చంద్రకాంత్కి రేపు మధ్యాహ్నం మధ్యాహ్నం మా ఇద్దరికి ఉంది పొద్దున్న ఆయనకి చంద్రకాంత్కి అని ఇంకోసారికి ఉంది అదే సుందర్ రాజ్ అది రేపు పొద్దున్న వెళ్ళాలి పొద్దున్న నుంచి అక్కడే ఉండాలి నేను పొద్దున్న డ్యూటీ అయిన వాడు తొమ్మిది నాకు రావాలి మధ్యాహ్నం డ్యూటీ అయిన వాడు వన్ ఒంటి గంట నాకు రావాలి వన్ థర్టీకి అవును మండే చేశాడు మండే చేశాడు ఎవరు అరే మండేది పెట్టాడు సార్ తర్వాత 
లేదు 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 అదే అంతే అంతే ఏమన్నా మీకు రేపు రేపు జీతం అందుతుంది లేదు లేదు సరే ఉంటాను అది ఫోన్ చేశాను ఫోన్ చేస్తే ఫోర్త్ని వచ్చి జాయిన్ అయిపోండి అంటే నేను చెప్పాను ద్వితీయ విఘ్నం ఐదో తారీఖున సెలవు ఉందండి జగ్జీవన్ రావు బర్త్డే అంటే లేదు సార్ మీరు మామూలుగా కాలేజ్ దగ్గరకు వచ్చేసండి వచ్చేసి కొంతసేపు ఐదు నిమిషాలు కూర్చుని వెళ్ళిపోండి అప్పుడు ద్వితీయ విఘ్నం ఉండదు కదా అన్నాడు సరేలేండి అన్నాను ఫోర్త్ మంచి రోజు ఫోర్త్ సిక్స్ లేదా సిక్స్త్ సరే బిజ్ బిజీగా ఉన్నట్టున్నారు లాగిన్ అవ్వరు ఉంటానైతే ఇంకమ్స్టమ్స్టమ్స్టమ్స్టమ్స్టమ్స్టమ్స్టమ్స్టమ్స్టమ్స్టమ్స్టమ్స్టమ్స్టమ్స్టమ్స్టమ్స్
So from the first one, if you deduct the second one, automatically you are going to get the tax on non-agricultural income. This is the thing that you have to take into account. Next, second point is average rate of income tax, section two, subsection 10. Okay, so what is the average rate? How much is the average rate? Some people they'll pay less, less amounts and some people they'll pay high amounts. But what is the average rate that we have to take into account? So the average rate we have to calculate is total tax, including surcharge and educational subs by total income into 100. That is the formula to calculate the average rate of income tax. Next, maximum marginal rate, MMR, section 167B. So what is this maximum marginal rate? That is, what is the maximum amount that we will charge for, a ta for the tax amount? That is, what is the maximum rate of tax? Generally, the MMR is 30%. Uh, generally, the MMR is 30%. In, I mean, then after calculating the 30% tax, you have to take into account other these things. That is, educational cess, health cess, everything you have to take into account. So that is nothing but the maximum rate of tax. Then assessment year. What is this assessment year, sir? Assessment year means that year in which, okay, the person, that is the individual has to pay the tax. For example, okay, financial, financial year starts from 1st April of one year to 31st March of second year. That is financial year. And before that, whatever it may be, the year that we come across, okay, we, will, we have to take into account that what is the income of that year, what is the income of that year, and on that we have to calculate the tax. Okay, previous year, whatever it may be, the year preceding the assessment year, we'll call that thing as previous year. And that too, relevant previous year, when you take into account the relevant previous year, immediate year before the assessment year is nothing but the relevant previous year. And whatever it may be, the years before that is, they are nothing but the previous years, we'll call that. And when you take into account, uh, business or anything okay the previous year in certain cases will be cash credits section 60 unexplained investments section 69 and unexplained money etc section 69a amount of investments etc not fully disclosed in the books of accounts section 69b and amount borrowed or repaid on hundi section 69d so in these cases you will come across the previous year they'll take into account the date okay and whatever it may be the period before the starting of the date we'll take that period as assessment year or we have to take into account that year as previous year and we have to collect them and calculate the tax on that so exceptions to the rate of previous to the rule of previous year in these following cases okay you won't come across any previous year for example shipping business of non residents section 172 okay whenever you come across shipping business of non residents then okay this previous year it won't then and there itself, they have to pay the tax and they have to collect the tax. Next, persons leaving India, section 174. Some people, they'll stay in India and some people, after some time, they'll push off to other countries. So then, then and there itself, there won't be any calculation of previous year, then and there itself, they have to pay the tax. Next. Assessment of AOP, Association of Persons, or BOI, okay, or Artificial Judicial Person formed for a particular event or purpose. 
in this case also you have to take into account the tax amount as and when the thing is there it is ruled by section 174a next assessment of a person trying to transfer his assets with a view to avoid tax 175 section 175 suppose if a person say for example a if he is burdened with the tax amount then what he will do is he don't keep any asset in his name he will transfer his assets to another person in that case we there is no necessity for us to go and think about the previous year next the important thing that we will come across in this income tax is pan 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 number that is permanent account number persons who are earning money persons who are earning money they must be given this pan number permanent account number and that account number it is compulsory for any sse okay any per tax payer so this permanent account okay number section 139a sir this number how we will get by taking into a form by taking into a form and by filling that form we'll call that thing as 49a 49a the number of the form is 49a when you fill that form and when you submit to the government people the government people after 45 days they'll give a number under the central government symbol emblem or under the, that with that okay thing they'll give a number and that number is nothing but pan 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 permanent account number and <coughs> excuse me <coughs> excuse me and whether this pan is very very essential yeah this pan number is very very essential to any individual okay and what are the provisions regarding the pan number every person if his total income exceeds maximum maximum exemption limit okay then pan number should be taken to account any person carrying on business or profession whose total sales or turnover or gross receipts are likely to be exceeded exceed 5 lakh rupees next charitable trust and religious institutions central government may specify any person under the law to obtain pan example exporters importers assessees to whom excise rules are applicable persons who are registered under the central sales tax act okay and we have to code the pan number it is compulsory and in what circumstances it is compulsory sale or purchase of any immovable property valued at 5 lakh rupees or more sale or purchase of motor vehicle other than two wheeled two wheeled vehicle which requires registration under motor vehicles act of 1988 time deposit exceeding 50000 with a bank banking company banking institution deposits exceeding 50000 rupees in post office savings bank contracts for sale or purchase of securities exceeding 1 lakh rupees if a minor intends to open an account in a bank he can mention his father's or mother's pan as reference application for installation of telephone connection including cellular connection payment of hotel restaurant bills exceeding 25000 rupees at any time okay during the previous year a person on whose income tax at source is likely to be deducted to the tds payment of cash for purchase of bank draft or pay orders or bank checks from a banking company to which the banking regulation act 1949 applies deposit in cash aggregating 50000 rupees or more with a banking company okay payment in cash in connection with 
travel to any foreign country of uh, an amount exceeding 25,000 rupees, making an application to any banking company to which the Banking Regulation Act 1949 applies, payment of an amount of rupees 50,000 or more to a mutual fund for purchase of its units, payment of an amount of rupees 50,000 or more to a company for acquiring shares issued by it, payment of an amount of rupees 50,000 or more to a company or an institution for acquiring debentures or bonds. Okay, payment of an amount of rupees 50,000 or more to the Reserve Bank of India for acquiring bonds, payment to a dealer for purchase of billion or jewelry worth, ex worth exceeds 5 lakhs rupees or more. This is, these are the various things where the PAN number is to be quoted. Now, penalty. If a person will, uh, fails to comply with the provisions of section 139A, that is PAN, he has to pay a penalty of 10,000 rupees. Quoting of permanent account number is not required in the case of any resident, uh, in, the, in the case of non-residents and the persons who do not have any taxable incomes, but may have agricultural incomes. Rule number 114C. Now, we are going for the rates of taxes for the assessment year 2020 to 2021. Okay, the rates for senior, super senior citizens, that is above 80 years of age, up to 5 lakhs rupees nil, 5 lakh 1 rupees to 10 lakhs 20%, above 10 lakhs 30%. Now, for senior citizens who have completed 60 years or more, but less than 80 years, up to 3 lakhs nil, 3 lakh 1 rupee to 5 lakhs 5%, 5 lakh 1 rupee to 10 lakhs 20%, and above 10 lakhs 30%. Now, ordinary residents, that is below 60 years of age, up to 2 lakhs 50,000 nil, 2 lakhs 50,000, 1 rupee to 5 lakhs, 5%, 5 lakhs, 1 rupee to 10 lakhs, 20%, and above 10 lakhs, you'll come across 30%. And another thing is, you'll come across rebate under section 87A. A resident individual can avail rebate under section 87A if his net income does not exceed 75 lakhs. Okay, it is deductible from income tax before calculating education says the amount of rebate is 100% of income tax or 12,500 rupees, whichever is low. Now, surcharge. Okay, generally 10% is the surcharge when the income crosses 50 lakhs and below one crore. When it crosses one crore and below 10 lakhs, you have to go for 15%. Okay, so this is about the surcharge. And education says, I told you already that. Education says, okay, 2%. Higher and secondary education says 1%. And health says 1%. These are compulsory. Now, coming to artificial judiciary, judiciary persons. The rate, uh, the rates of tax are the same as given above in case of individuals. Firm, 30% tax apart from this says companies, 30%, 30% and the surcharge will be, okay, for firms it is 12% and for companies also the surcharge is 12% when the income crosses, okay, 10 crores, subject to marginal rebate. For foreign companies, the tax rate is 40%, apart from the educational says. <coughs> Excuse me. And what is the surcharge, sir? 2% for foreign companies, it is 2% if the income crosses 50 lakhs and below 1 crore rupees and 5% if the income crosses 1 crore and below 
टेन एक्सक्यूज मी टेन क्रॉस मार्जिनल रिलीफ ओके you have the individuals or the companies or the firms they are going to get the marginal relief if the income exceeds okay 1 crore okay 1 crore now cooperative societies how they have to pay the tax up to 10000 10% 10000 rupees to 20000 20% and about 20000 you'll come across 30% and 12% will be the surcharge along with the educational cess okay local authorities the local authorities are to be taxed at 30% and 12% is the surcharge apart from the educational cess now how the treatment of income will be okay how the treatment of income will be the treatment of income will be in three ways taxable incomes exempted incomes and rebateable incomes these are that is rebateable incomes are nothing but the tax free incomes tax taxable income section 14 to 69 they will come under and exempted incomes section 10 subsection 1 to section 10 subsection 48 and rebateable that is tax free income section 86 these are the things that we will come across regarding this okay treatment of income tax treatment of income now we before going to the tax one must understand how the gross total income gti we'll call that in abbreviation form gti how this gti that is gross total income is to be calculated when we go for income source income source we will get from five heads from five heads we are going to get first one is income from salaries income from house properties okay profits and gains capital gains profits and gains from business or profession and another thing is capital gains and income from other sources these are the five sources that we are going to get the income and when we club the income from all the sources the total income we will call that thing as gross total income so what is this total income sir okay what is this total income from gross total income you have to take away some of the items that is okay rebate under section 87 a okay educational cess relief under section 89 okay under section 89 sub section 1 and rebate under section 86 and all these things if you deduct you'll come across okay you'll come across this net payable tax so you told the total income sir yeah from gross total income you have to deduct some deductions under section 80c to 80u 80c to 80u then you will get the total income and from that if you deduct this marginal rate of rebate of 80 uh, rebate of 87a okay educational cess relief under section 84 891 rebate under 86 advance tax and tds if you deduct that oh, i mean then only you are going to get the net payable tax okay so this is how you will come across and with this i am going to close this and in the next class we are going one by one and mind it that income tax is completely uh, problematic as well as this theoretical part when you can able to understand the theory then you can able to do the problematic part suppose if you cannot able to understand the theory part it is highly difficult for any person to go for problematic portion okay first of all you have to understand what are the provisions what are the exemptions what are the e privileges that we come across all these things you have to understand very well then only you can apply or then only you can go for the problematic portion okay so until then have a nice day and don't forget to subscribe to my channel thereby it is nothing but an encouragement for me okay
Thank you. Thank you very much.